the European Action Coalition launches a series of videos on social housing in Europe. Over three videos, we will talk about public and social housing from what it has been, to what it is, to what it could be. In this first video, we will look at the history and see how things have developed since the end of the Second World War and how we arrived here. Let's start with the basics. The European Action Coalition considers that social and public housing is a type of not-for-profit housing produced and maintained with the financial support of the state. It is an instrument for assuring housing as a universal human right. In our view, it should be jointly owned and administered as a common good by the state and the collectives of the tenants. It is rented out at a price that is affordable in accordance with the tenants' incomes. This type of housing is protected from the market forces and actors that are responsible for the commodification and financialization of the housing sector. It cannot be sold. As such, social and public housing belongs to the larger category of socialized housing. Houses for people, not for profit. Houses for people, not for profit. After the Second World War, with millions in need of homes due to wartime destruction, migration, and population growth, Europe embarked on a wave of investment of public money in the production of public and social housing, mostly through mass construction. Just in the UK, around 440,000 apartments were built between 1955 and 1975. In Sweden, the state Million Homes program built close to 1 million new homes between 1965 and 1974. Romania's new socialist government commissioned the construction of 340,000 dwelling units, most of them in the capital, Bucharest, between 1955 and 1960. This mass housing was inspired by a wide variety of policies for a changing society, aiming to build a new social order. But states approach public investment on housing differently. Some applying the funds in state-owned companies or institutions, and others in private companies, civil organizations or associations. In the mid-70s, housing policies took a turn under the influence of neoliberal capitalism. And why shouldn't people buy their council house if they want to do so? All over the country, there are hundreds of thousands of people living in council houses who would like to buy their own council house. The Conservatives believe that anyone who has occupied a council house for three years should have the opportunity to do so. And they should be offered that council house at two-thirds of market value. That means that for a council house with a market value of £6,000, they would be offered it at £4,000. They would then pay, admittedly, a little bit more in mortgage repayments than they pay in rent. But at the end of the period, the house would belong to them. This dream of home ownership as a symbol of success, despite bringing indebtedness to households, was highly promoted by conservative neoliberal policies across Europe. After 20 years of stable economic growth and public investment in social and public housing, these houses began to enter the private market, which, as we know, has the sole purpose to profit, despite the social needs and rights of the people. If in the southern and eastern Europe, these homes were sold mostly to the tenants, in the Western and Northern countries, they were also sold to non-profit housing associations or to private companies such as transnational investment funds. Despite capitalism presenting the market as a solution for the housing crisis, the reality is that it did not solve the problem, while it also pushed families further into debt and housing insecurity. Into the 90s, the neoliberal policies deepens and the private sector becomes a further dominant force in the housing sector for all of the European countries. 
namely in the former socialist countries, which became new fields to private investment and neoliberal domination. Aggressive trends are witnessed in Germany, the Netherlands, and Sweden, where much of the housing began to be concentrated in the hands of big companies. In many cases, due to the end of public-private partnerships, which seized decades-long controlled rent apartments. Step by step, governments, in allegiance with the markets, worked to demonize public housing as a failed attempt to ensure housing rights by associating it with crime. These policies, designed to spark fear, also encouraged the private sector, which promoted mortgages despite the burden of decades of indebtedness to the banks and the risk of losing the home for default payment. Georgia. Mientras te vas imaginando cómo será tu futuro hogar, Georgia. tus ahorros en la cuenta vivienda del banco hipotecario te están produciendo este buen interés. Además de desgrabar, pon en marcha tu hogar. Abre una cuenta vivienda del banco hipotecario. And then the crisis hits, after two decades of privatizing public housing and selling the dream of home ownership, the 2009 financial crisis and European debt crisis led to countless people losing their jobs and income, trawling along their mortgages and rents. Despite the social crisis, European Union promoted austerity measures leading to a mass eviction wave, a rise in homelessness, and people living in overcrowded homes or in informal and insecure housing solutions. As the European markets started to recover from the crisis, the process of commodification of housing intensified, while profiting from the people's poverty, further increasing the need of public and social housing. However, overall, social housing had been transformed into something exclusively for the impoverished. And, with an increasing poorer middle class, the dubious concept of affordable housing, which we will talk about in the next video of this series, was created. Until now, states have remained unresponsive to their people's needs, making minimal investment in the public housing stock, despite knowing that the waiting lists to access these homes are long and growing. Meanwhile, rising rents continue to push people out of their homes, and governments continue to promote financial markets and privatization. As Guillaume Evangeliste perfectly summarized, from World War II to the present, housing policies in Europe have changed in terms of both goals and instruments. Housing, in general, has increasingly been understood as a market asset, and intervention by public administration has shifted from the direct provision of social housing to a focus on facilitating access to housing market through counseling services or financial assistance. In parallel, there has been a shift from a generalist provision of social housing to broad sections of society to a focus on targeting aid to the needy. In the next video, taking into consideration the complexity of the public and social housing systems in Europe, we will take a deeper dive into how it actually works in the present. From ownership to administration, to the access of housing requirements. Join the fight for the increase of social and public housing stock as a common good democratically ruled by the collectives of tenants and financially supported by the state. Together, we can make our demands a reality. Houses for people, not for profit. We stand side by side beyond the city limits. Houses for people, not for profit.